notice when we look at glory, we also got to understand that we will get the empowerment of his wisdom. When I think about uh, the wisdom of God and I think about the glory of God, I cannot help but think of three men in the Bible that operated under the glory. Moses operated under the glory. He operated so much that he also had a, had a, a place with God where he was able to go into the tent and God would meet him there. And then we move from the tent, the, the tent to a tabernacle. We call it the tabernacle of Moses, the three dimensions of God. God resided in the tabernacle for 400 years. But after that, there was a shift that goes back to Haggai, Haggai 2 and 9. The shift was God begins to build a temple. The temple was placed in the heart of David. Notice the shift. Notice the change. Notice what God is saying now. I don't want just a tent. I don't want just a tabernacle. I'm getting something more solid. He says, I need a temple. And David has the heart. He has a desire to build the temple. But because he's a man of war, he has not the capability of building it. So God says, I know it's in your heart. I know you got the picture, but I've got to use your son to do it so Solomon comes up and now Solomon is the one that builds the temple notice if you all will go back and read the Bible it shows that the temple that was built was excellent it was to perfection God gave the instructions and they obeyed but they didn't have anything shabby in the temple my God it was built of rock it was built of splendor even the furnishings in the temple was excellent it was so excellent that the Bible says that the Queen of Sheba she came to see the temple that Solomon had built and when she came to see the temple that Solomon had built she said oh, it takes my breath away because this wisdom that you possess is greater than I could have ever imagined I heard what they said about it but now I see, y'all not with me, the wisdom that came through the glory of God manifested fruit that caused people to see the glory. So we're, the possession of what we're going to have in this season is not just a shout. It's not just what we experience. The way you move uh, is only an expression to what you feel. But true glory is manifested through fruit. So there's going to be some evidence of the fact that the glory is in us by what we manifest. Are you following me? The Bible says Queen of Sheba was so impressed, she brought gifts. She brought gifts. There was no need for nothing. And the Bible says, and, and hopefully we'll get to it next week, the Bible says that those who were with Solomon, the Bible says happy were those men. This is the season where you've got to be in the right place at the right time with God's chosen. The thing about it is, sisters and brothers, God chooses them. So we have no, we have, we have no count in it. It's not our vote. But you'll know who he chose by the fruit that they bear. Turn to your neighbor and say, they don't have to tell you. You're going to see it in this season. And that's what you need to be connected with. You need to be connected with glory producers. There's people who can produce some finances, and those finances, they, they're vain. They come and they go. But glory don't just produce finances. It produces integrity with the finances. It produces health. It produces a joy. It produces peace. Somebody say she's talking about the glory. And that's what God has released, and we've got to get in a place to receive it. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Now, real quickly, let me try to get you ready for it. Go to the book, if you would, of uh, Haggai 2 and 9. Let's go 1 through 9. Because some of you may be asking the question, because I ask it too. I ask God questions. Because, you know, I, they might be silly questions, but I ask them. What does us building an impact center have to do with glory? I had to ask the question. 